first maple syrup made in this grove of trees was in the late 1800s in a man by the name of Penrose, his last name. Grandpa bought the farm from him and he started making maple syrup. And that was in the early 1900s. And he owned this farm and the one to the west of me. And uh, they had a log cabin back here for the sugar camp. And I used that, and my dad used it. And uh, and then in 91, I built a new cabin for the old. It was pretty well rotted down. And it just had a dirt floor and pretty primitive. So I built this and uh, got this evaporator, it was used. And we started. And Ed Covinger, my neighbor down here, was the one who was with me originally. Starting in the first forecast you have of above freezing temperatures of any length at all is when we start laying out the line. And we lay out we lay out the main line first. There's actually three main lines a north line, a south line, and an east line. And once them are laid out, then you lay out the, the smaller lateral line, and they're all numbered, and the trees are numbered, and the main line is numbered. So it all goes together like a puzzle. And it's not as easy quite as it sounds because if you go around a tree wrong, on the wrong side of the tree with the line, you'll end up maybe being too short. So, it's a little. So anyhow, once you get the lines all laid out, that's really the, the biggest thing. And then you have to put the, the uh, evaporator together. So you take that apart, and when you're done in the spring, uh, you clean it, you use pan cleaner, and clean the pan, and put them on cover them and, and more or less put them away. So you have to get them back set up so you can, can boil. And uh, then you use, we use the vacuum pump on the line. There's two of them now. This year we had been using one, but I'm trying out two to see if, see if uh, Two would do any better, and I don't. So far, I don't think it has. But time will tell, maybe. Okay, just basically, we're out uh, checking the lines and um, checking to make sure that there's no air leaks in the lines. Which then, uh, if there's air leaks in the line, the vacuum's not as good, which helps pull more sap into the cabin. So what you're doing out here is just going through and basically um, just checking for leaks and fixing the where they're leaking at. Sometimes we have to heat up joints where they're uh, not sealed or sometimes we have to replace the joints on that. Sometimes you can see them going by right here. So that tells you there's air somewhere down in the line. So I have to go back and walk back and see, backtrack to see where they're coming from. What's the dial read there, Al? Actually being a productive member helping probably three or four years um, before that I mean when we were kids we were always out and about I'm not sure how helpful we were but <laughs> we were out here <laughs> so probably just three or four years I would say I think I'm the the least deaf member of the uh, team here so I guess I'm mostly outside just looking for leaks and things in the lines so. the family that you asked around here is gonna have a lot of a lot invested as far as um, you know family farms, family functions, so um, I guess for all of us it's, it's pretty normal. I guess if you leave this area, you know, you'll run into people that say, really, your family's been doing that for so long, but, um, you know, you, you don't think about it too much around here, but once you leave and, and really talk to people who who aren't used to that sort of thing, it, you know, it makes you appreciate it a lot more. I wouldn't say it's quite so fun while you're making it, but it sure is worth it the whole rest of the year, so um, I... I don't do store-bought maple syrup very well, so it's kind of fun, you know, to, to take homemade maple syrup to college and your friends say, what on earth is this and how do we get some? So, but yeah, so it's a lot of fun. See you in a bit, Grandma. Yep.